As we begin our slow emergence back from the heights of the pandemic, there are a lot of, there's a lot of pressure put on people to get back to normal. For some, the pandemic had lasting effects on their overall health, including their mental health in a number of different ways and for a number of different factors. Joining us now to talk about this is psychotherapist at the Birmingham Maple Clinic, Ronnie Hormel, with us now on the Megacast. Ronnie, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to be here this morning. And it's funny, I was just uh, listening to your previous um, guest and our, we are directly located next to Diamonds Direct. Oh, very interesting. Okay, well, <laughs> your new neighbors are very gracious. We appreciated having them on and uh, appreciate having you on as well. So first off, uh, please tell us about yourself and your specialties and the kinds of patients that you are typically treating at the Birmingham Maple Clinic. So uh, Birmingham Maple Clinic is um, really cool and unique because we really see a diverse group of people, um, which I know sounds very vague, but um, we see, we have specialists that work with, um, we have specialists that work with addiction, panic, um, certain depression, like play therapy as far as kids, um, addictions. So I really feel lucky as well as we have psychiatrists that work with us for patients that also might need medication management. Um, so I feel really lucky because I work at a cool place which is super diverse and a lot of us have our different interests and niches. And so for you as a psychotherapist, having met with patients and had a variety of different conversations on, on your patient's mental health and yeah. on outside factors impacting their life during the COVID-19 pandemic and then other and from other clinical information as well. We've seen and have heard so much over the course of the pandemic about the rise in alcohol use and in alcohol abuse and the, and the ways that that's impacting people's overall health, including their mental health. We've seen Absolutely. that increase happen. What are some of the factors that have have led into that increase over the course of the pandemic? So there's a few. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like the biggest one probably that I've seen, um, but I do talk a lot to my colleagues about it, is a lot of anxiety. And it's the uncertainness and, you know, it's coming from so many different areas. So the pandemic was kind of unique in that it brought a lot of different stressors all at the same time that are pretty high up their stressors. So like, let's say, um, you have a chronic illness or a family member, a loved one does, this pandemic's happening, you're worried about their health, you may be worried about your job, you may be worried about your kids' schooling. So all of these little things that can pop up that can be pretty high in the Richter scale of stressors for a lot of people might have been happening all at once. Um, and there's another thing that a lot of people really didn't factor when it came to the use of drinking, which can be related to anxiety as well, is boredom right people were bored um just not driving maybe staying home more and just like oh my you know i'm not going anywhere i'm bored what i'm gonna do i'm gonna watch a movie and maybe have a couple cocktails have a couple glasses of wine and and so with the variety of different reasons that have factored into this increased use of alcohol and increased abuse of alcohol yeah. seen in patients over the course of the pandemic how do you as uh, mental health professional and others uh, in, that are your colleagues at the Birmingham Maple Clinic and others in the uh, profession as well, then yeah. go about treating that or addressing that issue and trying to you know, bring some sense of normalcy back to the overall mental health landscape and on top of that address this issue before it becomes its own major problem across the board in our society and in our community. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, there's a there's a thing called gray area drinking, which is where you're not necessarily rock bottom alcoholic, you're not having major um, losses, right, whether it be due to missing things, getting fired from jobs, missing appointments, but you're also not just a very casual drinker. So some of the warning signs are you maybe feel a little bit concerned about your drinking, right? Like you may be a little bit like, oh, am I doing this more than I did before? Um, and you're drinking to deal with emotions. So one of the things I'm just gonna kind of touch on both of your questions right there is um, really dealing with your central nervous system, really taking care of it. So right now the weather's getting nice, it would be get outside, spend time in nature, spend time with people you love. Um, touch is a big one, hug your friends more, hug your family more, hug a pet. I know this sounds weird, but this actually does release dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine in our brain, which are all very feel-good hormones. Um, do you find yourself looking forward to that happy hour drink more or that evening drink? That can be a warning sign. Um, and is Or is alcohol really integrated into a part of your life? Like you just can't even imagine going out to drink 
with friends or having a taco Tuesday without a margarita. Like that would just sound like clear madness to you. So it's a little bit of um, being aware of those things and just um, working on your central nervous system because what I hear as a professional when I hear the questions that I was just reading off my notes is I hear that you're struggling with self-regulation a little bit. So I'm sorry, what? No, please continue on. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things um, this new woman uh, talked about, she coined a term, um, conscious sobriety, which is where you're not necessarily white knuckle being sober, right? You're just kind of paying attention to your drinking. So you might be thinking, okay, wait, why do I want to have a drink now? And you, you might occasionally have a drink, but you're kind of putting support systems in like, oh, wait, interesting. How did my day go today? My day was a little bit more stressful. Interesting that I'm kind of wanting to pour a big glass of wine right now. Maybe I go for a walk first and see how I feel. So in, in being conscious about it, you're not necessarily like no, no more drinking because you, you're, you might be in that weird gray area. But the healthy point here is that you're taking care of your central nervous system and your emotions and really identifying why am I wanting that drink? And then maybe noticing, okay, if I'm cutting out a little bit less because I had just one glass of wine instead of two to three because I just went on a walk, also pay, paying attention to how you're feeling the next day, how your work's doing, how your moods are. So just, you know, kind of that's what we call mindfulness, which can be a little bit of the gluten-free and psychotherapy now, the word's thrown out a lot. That's what it is. And so if you are employing these strategies, if you're asking these questions, if you are noticing that you are in a situation where you're, you're craving a drink, you're not quite sure why, and you're trying to push yourself away from those behaviors, and, and uh, especially if they're becoming habitual, how mm -hmm. helpful can it be to then consult with a professional if those strategies aren't working for yourself, to have somebody else there to help you through those, especially someone that has a professional and a clinical background in these kinds of situations? It's really important because they can really help with something um, that we call um, psychoeducation. So they will really help just really explain a lot to you. And you can leave, I mean, even in an area where I don't specialize in, anytime I, I have some psychoeducation in a training, I kind of walk away thinking, wow, I'm really conceptualizing that different. So it can really help you understand where your patterns are, how to be more mindful, is it a problem? And even if it's a gray area where a therapist might be like, okay, so this isn't, you know, you're not at rock bottom, but let's make sure you don't get there and kind of help you implement. So it's really important to work with a specialist there to kind of bring all that psychoeducation because that kind of clicks in with the self-awareness kind of twofold. And um, so then you're able to feel supported. And then, you know, it feels good when you're doing the work outside of the sessions, you're catching yourself, be like, wait a minute, why am I having a third glass? Like, this is what I talked about last week in therapy. And um, then, you know, you get that self-reinforcement of growth, your insights increasing, you're kind of more aware of like, wait, why, why am I talking faster? My blood pressure's a little up. Oh, I, I might be a little stressed right now. We're joined by psychotherapist Ronnie Hormel from the Birmingham Maple Clinic, joining us on the Oakland County Megacast. More information can be found on the Birmingham Maple Clinic at BirminghamMaple.com. That's BirminghamMaple.com for more information. You can give them a call as well at 248-646-6659. That's 248-646-6659 for more information or visit their website, BirminghamMaple.com. That's BirminghamMaple.com. Come. And so, so often we see, especially in creative media, but also in actual life, that friends or family or, or uh, uh, colleagues, whoever it may be that may be in someone's life and cares for them, may notice that someone is developing a drinking problem or has a drinking problem and will stage an intervention. What are your thoughts on the intervention as a inter an intermediary method to address someone's drinking problem. Are they effective? Could they be, are they more likely to backfire? Is there some sort of medium there? So there is there is a medium. I would definitely explore working with a substance abuse specialist if you are doing an intervention, because usually, especially if there is a problem, right? Like, like we're kind of crossing from gray area to, to pretty serious. The person is going to be um, embarrassed 
And, you know, they're going to hold on to that addiction. And so it, there might be a lot of gaslighting, a lot of shaming. You're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. I need to drink to be around you. Have you turned on the news? So it needs to be done very delicately. It can be fantastic when it's done with the right therapist that really feels like, you know, supportive and can kind of help refrain like, no, this, this person, what I'm hearing is they love you so much. You're one of the most important people in their life and they're concerned. So it, it can be very delicate. Um, yeah. We're joined by Ronnie Hormel, th psychotherapist at the Birmingham Maple Clinic, joining us on the Megacast. More information on their website, BirminghamMaple.com. That's BirminghamMaple.com. And so uh, as, as we continue on in, in the pandemic, it's a different phase now. Things are starting to seem a little bit more normal as much as they continue to go back and forth with with one surge versus another, right. slight increase mm -hmm. versus another. The uncertainty is still there, but the normalcy more than ever before in these last few years is also there. And that creates a pressure situation for so many people where they are either through their own expectations just by seeing others out, out and about and that fear of missing out or FOMO or by direct pressure from loved ones or friends or, or other people to get back out there and, ha and have more normal behaviors and activities. That can have a big toll on people too and that can lead them to issues such as increased drinking uh, and drinking or, or even other issues as well. So what is your advice for people who are looking to get back out there who are seeing these changes happen to go back at their own pace as well as advice for those that may be that may be poking and prodding at people to get them back out with them as to not pressure these individuals into something that could really take a toll on them if they're not ready. Yeah, so I always say, really pay attention, be the expert of yourself. We're all the experts of ourselves, but give ourselves permission to be the expert of ourselves and what we need. So, you know, me and you may have different needs and allow those also to shift. So your boundaries may be right now, you feel like, you know what, I'm safe wherever I'm at, whether you're vaccinated or not, I feel comfortable going out doing things. This is my safety level this weekend for, for the holiday weekend. For whatever reason, next weekend, you may feel fatigued, overwhelmed, hopefully numbers aren't going up, but something like that and allow your boundaries to shift. And you're like, you know what, right now, it, this is not for me. I, I'm not gonna be drinking or I'm not gonna be going out and that's okay. You know, because there can be exactly what you said, the FOMO or feeling like I need to do everything right now. Like, like this needs to be the summer of yes, I'm invited, I'm going. Um, that's not always the best idea because then we're not listening to ourselves and our boundaries and finding out. So my best advice would be listen to yourself, be the expert on what you need and also be flexible with that because it's gonna change. We're joined by Ronnie Hormel, psychotherapist at the Birmingham Maple Clinic, joining us on the MegaCast. More information on their website, BirminghamMaple.com. That's BirminghamMaple.com. You can also get more information by calling them at 248-646-6659. That's 248-646-6659 for more information. And, and, and Ronnie, there's uh, so many other things that we could be talking about and so many other mm -hmm. issues across the board that are becoming more prevalent or have been more prevalent over the course of the pandemic. Uh, if, is there anything that we haven't touched on at this moment in time that would be important for our audience to keep in consideration either as they're evaluating their own mental health and their own potential needs for intervention or just a discussion with a professional or any other mental health topics that haven't been discussed yet? Yeah, um, so this is kind of gonna be an umbrella over a lot of stuff, but I think okay. it applies to you often is we are, our brains are working normally right now by dealing with waves of stress between you know the pandemic um inflation ukraine stuff now you know we, we've unfortunately had a couple shootings in, in the past several weeks so people coming in feeling agitated insomnia anxious worried about you know their kids themselves loved one that is normal that is our brain working normal it's highly uncomfortable but you know you can feel reinforced like oh right these are things that are i should be concerned about i'm not a sociopath <laughs> okay so these are this is your brain working normal you can use that to ease yourself if it feels like it's becoming overwhelming where you're struggling then with functioning you're not you're you're really catching yourself struggling with going to sleep staying asleep um frequent tearfulness crying um panic attacks um or or almost avoiding things like like you're you're glad if things get canceled because you'd want to stay home those are the signs when your functioning shifts 
to reach out to a to reach out to a professional. You know, a good way is to talk to your primary care physician. You know, if you're looking for um, you're looking for some extra support, a therapist. Our clinic is great, BirminghamMaple.com. Um, as well as you can even go to your insurance company and you know find clinicians that are in the area that are paneled with your insurance if costs are a concern and they can often give you a list with names and numbers. So those are probably the easiest ways. Ronnie, thank you very much for being with us today. Absolutely, such a privilege, thank you.